Hey guys, welcome to chapter five, where we're gonna talk about different types of PTZ cameras and their applications. Speaking of different types of PTZ cameras, take a look at this guy. This is our ceiling mounted PTZ camera we use to get camera angles from above. I thought it was a kind of a perfect example here of a PTZ camera. You can see the little tally light right there above that lets us know this is the camera that is live in the video production software. Let's take a look. Hello and welcome back to chapter five. What we're going to talk about today is different PTZ cameras. And I have a few here we're going to be looking at in more detail. I've got a regular USB connected PTZ camera with kind of the traditional serial cable. These are super affordable. This is a Huddle Cam 3X PTZ camera. Uh, I have a PTZ camera with built in microphones. So video and audio in this one. Um, and then um, the more traditional PTZ cameras from PTZ Optics that offer that network connectivity that we will be learning about as well. And then finally, wanted to show an electronic pan tilt and zoom camera. We'll take a quick look at live footage from this in this video as well. Um, these cameras uh, are electronically pan tilt zoomed and we'll have a whole chapter on EPTZ, but I just wanted to show off just a few different PTZ cameras we dig into this presentation. So what we're seeing here are a couple different PTZ cameras and PTZ camera heads. And what, what is a PTZ camera head? I, I wanted to mention that. So far though, in this course, we've talked about the state of the industry, what a PTZ camera is, the parts of a PTZ camera, and who uses different PTZ cameras, uh, all as part of our PTZ camera handbook that you can download for free and um, get started with this. But let's talk about the different types of PTZ cameras. Now at a high level, you have a camera with the pan tilt zoom controls, those robotics built into the camera. And you also have the option to use a pan tilt zoom control head. And what this does, you actually can put a over the shoulder camcorder style camera on this head and make it robotically remotely controllable. And that's just something you should know because basically you can buy a, a brand new camera that has all of this built in, or you can buy a PTZ camera head and turn an older camera into a pan tilt zoom head. So it's an interesting idea, something to think about. Now, in general, there's a three kind of big level cameras. We're, again, we're not covering security cameras, which is a completely different type of camera, but there's USB connected pan tilt zoom cameras, plug and play, plug it directly into your computer and you're running. There's SDI cameras, which many times have HDMI as well and network connectivity. And then there's NDI and NDI is the IP video production protocol that's very popular in live streaming and video production. Those are kind of like the three high level types uh, of connectivity. And then the next thing you start to look at when you're thinking about the different types of PTZ cameras is optical zoom. And the optical zoom is really a function of the lens, okay? So the lens inside of the camera allows you to opti you have optical zoom. And uh, PTZ Optics has a zoom calculator you can look at at ptzoptics.com slash zoom. And what you, you kind of want to calculate is how far is this camera going to be away from the person that I am going to be zooming in on or the space that I plan to be recording. When you know that information, you can figure out how far you can zoom in and what you will actually capture. And just to give you a ballpark, like the 30X PTZ Optics lens can zoom into someone about 75 feet away and capture a head and shoulders shot of them. So just to give you a ballpark, and just in general, the more optical zoom, the farther you can zoom in. The less optical zoom, the wider the field of view. So if you have the camera close to a space, you probably want, le you don't need less optical zoom and you're actually looking for a wider field of view. And there's plenty of applications for that. The other factor of different PTZ cameras is how are we going to control this thing, right? Is it going to be controlled with an IR remote control? Are we going to use a joystick controller? And in which case, are we going to use an IP joystick controller, which leverages the network? 
or are we going to use an uh, uh, basically, I mean, I guess there's, there's a few other analog options, right? An analog controller that can control it via RS-232 or RS-485. There's a lot of different control capabilities and it's something you should consider because it's so important to the robotics of the camera. Now, when you're looking at a PTZ camera, there's a lot of variations in quality. You want to look at getting a quality lens. You want to look at getting a quality image sensor. These two factors, image sensor and the lens, really determine the quality of the picture. So we're thinking about how do we want to get video from the camera? How do we want to control it? And then at what price point do we want to come in at? Because you know, you're going to pay for higher quality lenses and sensors. We did speak, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit, and we talked about this in the book, uh, outdoor PTZ camera enclosures. And on the left-hand side, you are seeing a traditional security camera. It's vandal-proof. It has potentially a heater blower inside, which will heat away any condensation and blow it out so it doesn't get foggy on the glass. And that camera uh, from Axis is designed for security purposes. But there are broadcast quality cameras that can be used outdoors. In fact, you can take like a traditional PTZ optics camera and put it in a DotWorks D3 outdoor enclosure and use it outside. And there's a lot of different environmental considerations that you would like, you need to think about when you mount a camera outside, but it is definitely possible. And a lot of the scenarios include, you know, an outdoor soccer field or an outdoor um, stadium. So key takeaways here are that PTZ cameras generally are categorized by their video outputs and their optical zoom lenses. So you might have the same exact camera, like two or three of them with the same exact outputs, but different lenses. So that, that is uh, something that you would have to select between. When you're selecting a PTZ camera, you might want to create like a simple wiring diagram. And we're going to go over many of those in this online course, but just where are you connecting what? Is it all going to work together? Because there's probably other pieces to the puzzle besides the PTZ camera. And then each video connection has a unique set of limitations that you should be aware of. We discussed this in our previous chapter, but just want you to be thinking about, okay, well, if I'm going to be using, you know, SDI, the SDI video connector on the back of, let's say, this camera here, you know, this SDI connection, well, how far can we run that cable? Are we running an Ethernet cable? You know, that can go 100 meters. You know, are we running a USB cable that can only go a few feet? So I want to do a quick demonstration of the HuddleCam HD Pro to give you an idea of what electronic pan tilt zoom is. And I will compare that with an optical zoom camera. And then we'll go on to our next chapter. All right, so let's take a look at this electronic hand tilt zoom camera. I've got my IR remote here. In a couple chapters, we're going to be really deep diving into IR remote controls, but this is a completely electronic hand tilt zoom camera. Behind me right here is a optical zoom camera. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this one behind me here and I'm going to zoom in on, and, and clearly you guys are going to get the picture right away, but basically I'm going to zoom in on this camera here. It's connected via USB to my computer here, as you guys can see. And you can see as we're zooming in, we're not losing any quality, right? Because it's optical zoom. And we have the ability to pan, tilt, and zoom and, and really move around um, the studio. Now with an electronic pan, tilt, zoom camera, as you're seeing in front of me, and I'll cut to this again, uh, we, we can zoom in, you know, we can set presets, but the further we zoom in, it, it's still pretty good. You know, this is the thing about these EPTZ cameras is they have 4K image sensors. So when you zoom in 3X, you know, 10X, it doesn't look too bad, you know, but it's not quite as good as when we're zooming in with an optical zoom camera. And that's the point I wanted to make with this short little tutorial at the end of this video. We're going to have a whole chapter on electronic pan tilt zoom and what's going on in that space soon.